Here's our setup for the day. We've got our camera and clamp positioned on the top rung of an aluminum A-frame ladder. This ladder is solid and serves both to elevate the camera and provides easy access up and down. Also know that you can position your camera closer to the track in line scan mode than you can when timing in video mode. Also, it's best to mount the camera on the inside of the track if possible so that the camera is closest to finishing athletes during non-lane races, providing a better view of their hip number. Let's first place the camera on its side so that the runners are approaching from the bottom of the camera. Then manually center the camera on the line. Next, we are going to rotate the image within the software. From the top toolbar, go to View and choose Rotate, depending on the direction you need to rotate the image. Now is a good time to confirm your field of view, and raise or lower the camera with the gear controls as needed. Use a partner to stand in lane 1 so that the knees and above are visible. Walking to the outside lanes to confirm the entire athlete frame is also in view. Now let's dial in the finish line exactly. From within the finish line tab on the right, click the calibrate tool and choose both, providing both a horizontal and vertical line or crosshair to use the sight in. Here we see two thin blue lines. Use the gear knobs on the camera clamp to make small adjustments as needed. Here's how it looks. Move the vertical line to the leading edge of the finish line and the horizontal line on the same plane as the lane line. Next, let's open the lens to let in as much light as possible. On this lens, it's the inside ring. This will wash out the image white or almost white. Now to bring back our image, let's go to the Adjustments tab and reset our exposure settings. Enter value and press the Enter key. This can be trial and error depending on the lighting conditions. In bright sunlight, you may start with a value of 200, while indoors your exposure might be 2000. The image is good. We just need to focus the lens. On this lens, it's the outside ring. Make slow movements either direction. Use a partner if needed to watch the screen and slowly make adjustments until focused. With our finish line all set up and our image ready, we can now change the system into line scan mode. From the top toolbar, go to view and slide down to line scan mode. This will likely darken the image. Again, simply go to the adjustments tab and choose exposure. Enter a value and press the enter key. Experiment with values until you are satisfied with the image. Let's pause and look at the color variations in this image. You may see more of this indoors or in low lighting conditions. Our finish line has a lot of markings and the white finish line paint is chipping. This is being picked up on the image and it's normal. However, we can still improve on this, especially if we see moving striations or a drastic difference in color. This could mean your alignment is slightly off. Simply make small adjustments, usually left or right, to be sure you are exactly perpendicular to the finish line and the image will clear up. Let's talk frame rate for a moment. Remember that your exposure setting is your primary adjustment for both enhancing the image and impacting frame rate. The preferred exposure setting depends on the lighting conditions and the speed of the object. Try to use the lowest exposure setting you can while still getting a good image. Let's look at this recording again. Here's a very slow jogger whose recorded image is a bit distorted because the frame rate was set at 1002, perhaps overkill for distance races or slower moving objects. Here's another recording with a lower frame rate achieved by increasing the exposure setting. This is a better image because the frame rate better matches the speed of the runner. Let's go ahead and connect to the witness camera. From the top toolbar, go to view and slide down to witness camera and select show and it will appear on the screen. We can move and resize the overlaid image by grabbing it with the mouse and moving it where we'd like. To control witness camera settings, first click on the image and press Control H to open the menu. Here let's change the exposure by going to adjustments and exposure to make it a bit more true. We can also change frame rate, so let's go ahead and open that again, adjustments and frame rate, and here's where we can deliberately enter a frame rate for the witness cam. You may also want to adjust the witness cam placement on the finish line so that you cover as tight an area as possible to get the most detail from the camera. Enhancing the image is easy, especially to overcome a dark image or low light conditions. This can be done either before, during, or after recording and to either the main camera or the witness camera. 
use the brightness contrast gamma tab to make these improvements and rely more on the contrast setting than the other two. To adjust the witness camera image, click the witness camera to activate the region and check the bottom square. Here we see a dark image being lightened, first the main camera and then the witness camera. Let's go ahead and read a couple of races. It's recommended to create a bookmark by pressing the spacebar so you can quickly jump to the first place finisher with a control arrow key. The software positions the athletes from left to right to maximize the screen. A simple click on the torso creates a vertical line and timestamp for each finisher. We've imported our event file on the right and our times are auto-populating as we press the hip or lane number for each athlete. Once complete, we choose to save times and a results file is automatically created and saved. While the frame rate for sprint races might be 1000 frames per second or higher, which is great for sharp images and breaking ties, we generally want to lower our frame rate for distance events, matching the speed of the object with an appropriate frame rate. Capturing, starting and stopping the recording is an easy software button press or an F5 hotkey, which we prefer. Eagle Eye by design requires the operator to record the entire segment of finishing athletes. This assures that 100% of the finishing images are preserved automatically without the risk of auto capture failure or deleting by mistake. It also allows you to record the current race in the background while reading a previous race if needed. Live bookmarking during the recording process with a press of the space bar as athletes cross the line allows you to quickly jump past the dead space when reviewing the race, regardless of the distance between finishers, creating both a fast and accurate read. The witness cam will also move to this location to assist with athlete identification. The timeline can also be dragged manually as needed. Thank you for watching this Pro 3000 tutorial. We hope that it's been helpful.